Ryan Day has named a starting quarterback in Kyle McCord. And Kyle McCord gets his first game this weekend as a full-time starting quarterback for your Buckeyes. What should we expect from McCord tomorrow? We dive into that today on Locked on Buckeyes. You are Locked on Buckeyes, your daily podcast on the Ohio State Buckeyes. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, Buckeye fans? Welcome back to another episode of Locked on Buckeyes for the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jay Stevens, also the host of the Jay Stevens Podcast. It is a Friday, September 15th in the year 2023. And this episode is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager. For your small business, that's why LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash locked on college terms and conditions apply. During today's episode, we will dive into what we need to see from Ohio State tomorrow against Western Kentucky. And we will also share our final thoughts before tomorrow's game. I say our because my guy, our guy, Mo Murphy, is back with us once again. I talked to Mo when trying to get him on the show. And today he's back before Western Kentucky game, the Buckeyes' third game of the season. Mo, welcome back to the show. Hey, it's always great to be on, Jay. Um, you know, the last time when I wanted to get on with moving and adjusting to Dallas, it uh, it didn't fall its way. But now I'm pretty available and ready to go. So I'm definitely glad to be on Locked On Buckeyes. I, Buckeye-centric, that's all I got to talk. That's easy. Easy money. And also, we're looking at a team in the Buckeyes, offensively specific. They're going into this game knowing who their starting quarterback is, not just in that game, but going forward as Ryan Day has well publicly announced the full-time starting quarterback in Kyle McCord. And ultimately, I think it was the right move. You and I talked a little bit during the game a week ago, and neither was, neither of us are really pleased with what we saw from Devin Brown. Kyle McCord, QB1, going forward for Ohio State. Mo, we both believe it's the right move, and I think we'll get to see Kyle McCord take the reins and be the guy the Buckeye fans want as starting quarterback tomorrow. Yeah, I fully agree. Um, I felt like that at the end of the first half on Saturday. You know, I messaged you even before the half ended, and I'm like, we found our guy. Yeah. Because my thing was, Devin Brown wasn't going to play any better than that. And since... You already named him the starter in week one. You already named him the starter again in week two. Like, you kind of already showed us who you were edging towards anyway and kind of telling Kyle McCord, like, this is really going to be your job unless you give us a reason not to. And the way he played, I know it's against Youngstown State, and that's where everybody's discredit. But at the same time, like, all I wanted to see was that we have a quarterback. Like, that's what an Ohio State quarterback should look like against Youngstown State. Like, and that's what he did in the first half. And then, obviously, the second half trial for Devin Brown kind of makes the score look a little deceiving. We know what it could have been if Kyle McCord continued to play and we kept Marvin Harrison Jr. But everything I've seen from Kyle McCord, I got to see it again. And I know we'll get into him uh, uh, more. I got to see it again against Western Kentucky to feel more comfortable about going against uh, going into Notre Dame. But he played how I would expect a Ohio State quarterback in his second start to play against Youngstown State in the first half. Yeah, I'm right there with you, man. When it comes to Kyle McCord, you want to see better and improved play before Notre Dame. That's what tomorrow is to me. It's not a dress rehearsal. This is live action in game, and game reps are a whole lot different and mean a whole lot more than practice reps. He's getting more live game reps, going to get hit a little bit more, move around in the pocket, maybe showcase some of that mobility, showcase his big arm and big throws that he can that he can make. Those are things that I think even for him himself, the quarterback, he kind of needs this to gain more confidence before that game against Notre Dame. I think you and I, if we were to talk about the Buckeyes offense before the Notre Dame game and only had the, the Youngstown State game and Indiana game, our tone would be a whole lot different. We get another game to watch Kyle McCord play. And mm -hmm. I do believe Kyle McCord tomorrow, Mo, against Western Kentucky, He'll be able to he he can walk out of there with five touchdown passes. Like realistically, five touchdown passes, maybe two to Marv, two, two to Abuka, and one to somebody else. And we're having a different conversation, have a different, different level of confidence in Kyle McCord after that game, which I do believe one is a possibility, 
But two, also, not just being a possibility, we could be talking during the game saying, wow, man, like Ohio State has a chance against Notre Dame because of how McCord has improved from week one to week two to week three. Yeah, I fully agree. And I think his improvement is just going to be because, like, now he doesn't have to look over his shoulder. He doesn't have to think about a bad play um, and know that Devin Brown's going to come in. And if he makes a few good passes, he's going to get his momentum. He's going to get to establish drives. He's going to get to make throws. He's going to get to make mistakes if he does. Mm -hmm. I mean, I hope he doesn't. But it's just the fact, like, I don't think an interception early changes. Like, okay, now this is probably what Ryan Day wants. You throw an early pick. How do you respond? Because yeah. that's what I want to see. Because you have a big game where if you make a mistake, you know, coming in, you know, next week and, and you don't respond well against Western Kentucky, now you have a whole different conversation. But I don't expect that to be. I do think this is a dress rehearsal um, in a sense. And I don't want to disrespect Western Kentucky. And we'll talk about that here in a little yeah, bit. Yeah. But yeah. It's a dress rehearsal for Kyle McCord to, I think, offensively, Ohio State will dominate. Um, and I think it'll be because of Kyle McCord. You could tell he looked like a quarterback who went to high school with Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. last Saturday. Yeah. You saw the connection right away. You saw if all else fails, let me throw it to my guy because he's going to make the pass. And we saw a couple drops from Marvin Harrison Jr. in scenarios that we won it, but I'm not panicking. He's the best wide receiver in college football. They were drops later. He was probably disengaged in the game a little bit. It's a blowout. You feel like, all right, we're going to take – you get a little careless. That's what happens when you're one of the best – four or five best players in college football and games like that, you get a little careless, but I think Kyle McCord made every throw he needed to make and he played well. Like to say, is this guy going to win us a national championship? I feel like that's going way too far with two different type of games that you're watching. But as far as to feel comfortable that, you know, I want to see what he does for four quarters against Western Kentucky or three and a half, however long he plays, depending on the score and, feel comfortable going into this Notre Dame game because I think what you're going to have to evaluate is can he get in the shootout with Sam Hartman? I think that's the question you want answered come Saturday. Mo, last thing here about Kyle McCord, but I have to ask you, is this a game where you want to see if Brian Hartline is a good and capable play caller? Maybe after the first quarter. Okay. Like, I think maybe let's get it going. Let's get a couple – let's get up 14-0. Um, and maybe not necessarily look like it's taking this is getting carried away, but let's say Western Kentucky march for a drive, walk out with a field goal. Okay, it's 14 to three. We got a possession to play with. Let's let's uh, Brian Hartline, let's see what he do. Because even if we don't score or we don't come away with a field goal or we come with a three and out, like okay, Western Kentucky has to come score again. Still makes it 14 to 10, go back to Ryan Day. But I, I'd rather get comfortable instead of playing, trying to play cute early. Like, yeah. don't play cute early. Wipe, wipe them away a little bit. Get a comfortable lead. Get up a couple touchdowns where possession may not matter um, at that time frame in the game, and then you kind of let Brian Hartline. Let's really see. But, I mean, who knows? Maybe he is calling the plays right now. I don't really think so because I don't see our offense looking any different <laughs> from a Ryan Day right, perspective. Right. So I don't think like – or if so, it's just he learned everything from Ryan Day, and he's going to be an exact play caller like Ryan Day. I feel like those are the two things I've seen. So I don't really expect – to see how great of a play caller he is right now, unless we get up like comfortably and then you let him play, you can devalue. Well, he called plays when, you know, we were up big. That doesn't really show me much, but yeah, you get a little creative and let's just see what you could work with in, in a time. You don't want to put a offensive coordinator in his third game as an offensive coordinator, any worse predicament that you would put your quarterback who's in his third game. Mo, we got to dive into Kyle McCord and even a little bit of Brian Hartline, but what else do we need to see from the Buckeyes tomorrow against Western Kentucky? Mo and I dive into that next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a higher stakes wager for your small business. You want to be 100% certain that you have access to the best qualified candidates available. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the right people for your team faster and for free. It's free and easy to, to create a job post on LinkedIn Jobs. Once you create your job post, add your job in the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. 
post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Your Ohio State Buckeyes play the Western Kentucky Hilltoppers tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern time. Catch every snap of the Buckeyes hometown broadcast with SiriusXM on the SXM app. Search Buckeyes. Mo, this game tomorrow, third game of the season, uh, a great chance for the Buckeyes to continue to improve. We saw improvement from week one to week two. And something that I think we need to see, Mo, from week two to week three is more improvement, not just by the Buckeyes offense, but Mo by that defense as well. Yeah, I'm big on the defense. That That's where I'm at. I think we're looking at the defense heavy. Um, crazy to say, bro, we got we play f- four tough quarterbacks this year that I really think is going to be a problem for our defense. Starting this week, I think Austin Ward is going to be a big-time problem. Western Kentucky has an explosive offense. They have Mike White. You know, they had Mike White. They had Bailey Zappi, who, like, quietly, because he was at Western Kentucky, beat, like, Joe Burrow's historic. He had a better season yeah. than Joe Burrow's yeah, historic did. season. Yes, he did. But playing at Western Kentucky, you're not going to get the same credit as doing it at LSU and walking away with a national championship. Um, they're getting their best wide receiver back. So I think that's going to be interesting. Like I said, pre-show, I don't know if he's played up to this point, so I don't know if this is his first game back or not. But I know he didn't play much last year, and he was their best wide receiver. He's a key piece to that offense. And so I think defensively, like, when you play an elite, I say elite, yeah, he's at Western Kentucky, but when you play an elite quarterback, a guy that can shred your defense, the biggest thing to me is put pressure on him. And that's what we've had the toughest time is we don't get a lot of sacks. We don't mm-hmm. you know, we don't end plays early. We give you three or four seconds. We kind of let you play around with our defense. We let you expose our weaker side of, you know, our secondary. We run into – we have a secondary rotation anyway – where we're rotating three or four safeties. We don't have no real consistent DB play, which Jim Knowles stopped playing and put Sonny Styles on the field for every defensive snap, period, point blank. I feel like that should be not talked about. Same with Denzel Burke. Um, but I do think – I think we're going to be looking at the defensive line, and I don't think Western Kentucky's offensive line should be able to hold up with our defensive line when you're talking about a top-tier Power 5 school going against a you know a, a smaller Division One. So I think if you want to – Claim you got some NFL guys there. You want to feel comfortable going against Notre Dame's offensive line, which is a totally different monster. You have to bring it home. And you got to walk out of here with four or five sacks in the first half. You got to show some dominance. You got to make it easier on your DBs, especially when you have a lot of questions back there in the secondary. Um, But I think I'm looking at defense. I'm looking at the fact that this is the best offense we've played up to this point, which isn't saying much playing Youngstown State and Indiana. I get that. Hey, the, the offenses have gotten a little bit better each week. I think this is one of the best quarterbacks you'll play, but then you turn around and do that again, and then you turn around and got Drew Allar and J.J. McCarthy. So, But this guy is the real deal as well. He threw for over 4,000 yards last year, so I want to see how our defense holds up, and it starts with our defensive line. you got to get that guy scared in the pocket because if not, he's going to have some opportunities to pick our defense apart. We saw how Youngstown State was able to do that first first possession of the game, was able to pick our defense apart, and then it turned into don't throw the – to Denzel Burke, he eventually going to get it. <laughs> yeah, so we yeah. got to go with that approach, but we got to bring some home. Jack Sawyer, JTT, uh, Mike Hall. Y- y'all got to get a few sacks, man. Y'all got to walk out of there with five or six sacks at the end of the game. So with the defense, and you mentioned how the Buckeyes should be able to get a push against Western Kentucky's offensive line because it's Western Kentucky's offensive line. Not knocking them. They're good for their level. It's just not up to the level of the power five level that Ohio State is at. No, we should. We probably would have said the same thing about Youngstown State and against Indiana. Like the Buckeyes should get sacks. The Buckeyes should get in the backfield. The Buckeyes should have multiple sacks in the first half by defensive ends, by their elite guys. We have not been able to say that yet. So I understand your concern and the thought about, hey, Western Kentucky could do some things offensively through the air. Western Kentucky, uh, if you're not ready, if you're not ready, they can pick you apart, and they will do that. I don't know what we're going to get from this defensive line tomorrow, which is not normal for me to feel this way about a Buckeyes D-line. I understand there's been a slow drop-off of the play from the D-line over the past few years. The thought was things will start going up this year. I'm still waiting to see that go up in the pass rush conversation. Because, Mo, if it does not, this is not just a game where 
Sawyer, Toy Malowow, um, those guys don't have any sacks. It's also a game where I keep going to the next. I'm not, I don't mean to look ahead, but naturally I do. If you don't do it against Western Kentucky, you're not doing it against Notre Dame. So that's kind of where my mindset is like this game is not just like a non-conference game. It's a game for you to build confidence because if you don't, you have a top 10, uh, a top 10 opponent. You're going on the road and you might lose because you're not getting better in the areas you need to improve. So defensive line, I need to see improvement, but also more offensive line. And I talk about this a lot, not even trying to. I just need to. The old line needs to get better. And it's not just Simmons at left tackle. I think collectively the unit of five is still trying to figure things out, which is expected when you've only played two games together as a unit of five. But we need to see that improvement tomorrow. Some of the penalties that have happened, um, uh, shooting ourselves in the foot, those things need to go away. And tomorrow against Western Kentucky is a chance for that to happen. Yeah, there's so much. There's so much with Ohio State that you want to see, right? So now you have to put your points of emphasis on like, because like, okay, well, we want to get the run game going, but then we want Kyle McCord to go into the Notre Dame <laughs> game. And then we want, you know, so it's like, it yeah. is one of those, yeah. like all of them are, but you got to figure out what's important and you got to figure out what's going to be the most important to beat these top teams that you're going to play coming up. What's the most important for a recipe against next week against Notre Dame? Whose confidence do we really need to get up? The defensive line is simple. When you match up, one on one against offensive it, line, not that That's hard. It. So, but even offensively, like we're talking about the offensive line. So now, do we want to see better pre pass protection, which we did see against Youngstown State, or do hey we want to focus on getting a push on the run? But at the same time, like we need steady production from our running backs because Travion Henderson did look good against you know uh, Youngstown State last week in his five carries. He averaged ten yards per carry. He had he got in the end zone. You know, Mayan Williams was a, uh, they actually called his touchdown. Um, Chip Trainum, typically when he does get touches, he looks like he should be our starting uh, running back. But I think this, I, I think really this game, I think you focus on offensively, you need your offensive line to pass protect. I think you need Kyle McCord. I think you could put the run game to the side. I think the running backs are talented enough. They're due for a breakout game here or there. And maybe, hey, if you don't establish the run, Notre Dame's not preparing for the run as much. And that's when you have some break off runs that set up a lot of other plays. So I think this is the focus of getting Kyle McCord steady going with Emeka Abuka, Julian Fleming, Kate Stover, G. Scott Jr. and Marvin Harrison Jr., which I'm not worried about that tandem of Marvin Harrison Jr. and Abuka. But I want Fleming. I want all you know, I want Carnell Tate to touch the field and maybe get a couple catches, even if it's late in the game. Like I want everybody to be prepared because Notre Dame last year, we lost Jackson Smith and Jigba. We won 21 to 10, but our offense looked dead, like yes, just dead yes. in the water. Yes. So I want everybody to be prepared to play because I don't want to be a Marvin Harrison Jr. What a Marvin Harrison Jr. nagging injury or a little ankle sprain, or you know, he just got banged up and might not be able to return because of concussion or something like that. I don't want to be a Harrison Jr. injury away from losing the game, even when if you feel like if he got hurt, like the Georgia game, we win if he does if he doesn't get hurt is how pretty much the rest of the world feels, but I don't want that to happen. So I think everybody needs to get some confidence offensively, but mainly in the pass game, because I think that's really where you're going to be able to beat Notre Dame. Not that they're lacking in the secondary, but at the same time, like it's just, if we can really sling the ball and we're able to throw the ball and we're able, that's where our best playmakers are. They are on the outside in the Mecca Bull and Marvin Harrison Jr. So if we open it up, that opens up everything else offensively. And now you're telling me if you can open up the run game, it makes us hard to stop. And I think that needs to be a, a, Focus of emphasis right here against Western Kentucky. I'm right there with you, Mo. We're going to dive into more about things of the things we want to see or need to see from the Buckeyes against Western Kentucky tomorrow, as well as share our final thoughts on this game that's coming at you next on Locked on Buckeyes. This episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL season is here, and a great way to enjoy NFL football is with incredible deals from FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Right now, new customers can bet $5 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. Now is the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use, and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Once again, 
Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Mo, I do believe, and I talked, touched on this over the past few days of shows, we talked about the defensive line, talked about the secondary, offensively, Kyle McCord. My eyes are on the coaching staff at Ohio State. And I'm not calling for anyone's job to be like to lose their job or to get fired. I am not going there. But I want to see adjustments on the fly. We can understand adjustments from game to game, and you may see improvements from, hey, we're utilizing this personnel grouping versus this one because we know this one is more productive for us. We understand all of that. But the on-the-fly adjustments, not just, hey, we're going to pull a guy off the field because he may, he got beat one time. Saw it a year ago with Josh Proctor against Notre Dame. Saw it last week. Cam Martinez. You mentioned that earlier. Cam Martinez got beat. Oh, he's off the field. Not mm-hmm. those type of adjustments, but tweaks schematically. So you're always having the upper hand against your opponent. Sometimes people say Ryan Day or the coach at Ohio State occasionally get out coached. You can get out coached in this game and still win, but you don't want to get out coached against Western Kentucky. Yeah, I mean, I so when it comes to coaching, my thing is I don't think it's a personnel problem. You can't tell me we're getting all these five former five stars and good transfers and like everybody talks them up and we come in with the best roster, like one of the better rosters in football, especially on the offensive side. Like you can't tell me all this. And then all of a sudden, like when we step on the field, these guys can't play. Right. It's it, my thing is consistency, and yeah. it ain't from it's not from the players. I mean, yes, you need consistency from the players, but I'm talking about the coaches. Consistent lineups. Let guys make a mistake. Let them. It, it, hey, one mistake I get pulled like that. That puts a different type of pressure, especially on the defensive side. Jim Knowles got to get away from that. You make one mistake, you're done for the day, and then we'll see how you do in practice, and then give you one more opportunity next week, and then you're pulled because guys play different. If you Put your best players on the field. I said Denzel Burke should always be out there. Sonny Styles should always be out there. I think, you know, Josh Proctor is expected to play. He should play the whole game. Yeah. My thing is when you can play more loose and free and not have to look over your shoulder and know, ah, I made the mistake. Is he pulling my – is he calling my number? Like, you play a little bit different. You We, we play so tight. We play like you could tell they're so afraid to make a mistake that they make the dumbest of dumb mistakes. Like – you sit there and be like, how do you make that mistake? But when you're afraid of making a mistake, you're thinking about the simple thing, and it was the simpler thing that you messed up on. So my thing is, we don't really have that problem on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, maybe at running back, where if you don't get going in the first two or three touches, then we put in Mayan Williams and we put in Chip Trainum. But yeah, on the yeah. defensive side of the ball, I need consistency with from the coaches as far as keeping in your best personnel. And this, it seems like there's some philosophy I don't know if it's Ryan Day or if it's just the tradition of Ohio State, but like Sonny Styles is what a sophomore really supposed to be a freshman had reclassified. But this whole like notion that it really seems like we don't play young guys that much unless you are just off the charts, more talented than everybody. I think it's got to stop. We yeah. got to put the best player on the field. It seemed like that's the route Jim Knowles goes. Sonny Styles was one of the best players on defense last year as a freshman and one supposed to be there when he played, you know, he played without ruining his eligibility or whatever. But I just I feel like there's got to be consistency with rotations. If you're going to rotate, have a consistent rotation. Or you're a third down guy. You're a first and second down guy or you're a this this drive guy, this drive guy. But you're going to get back in whether you make a mistake or not. It's just got to be consistency in personnel because you can't tell me we have all these players that everybody rant and raves about, especially on defensive end. And we just can't figure it out because one time you see one guy make one mistake. You'd be like, I ain't seen him in two to three weeks. Man, that's got to stop. That can't happen. Mo, you're a big basketball guy. You watch NBA basketball all the time. And one thing that I compare conversations like this with, there are guys in the NBA who start, maybe shouldn't start, but maybe they're starting because the coach knows them starting with that starting five is the best way for them to be the most productive in that game. There are guys out there, and I've heard this from NBA coaches and players and point guards saying, hey, there's a guy on my team who is the fifth option on offense. But in the first two or three times down court, I give him the ball because I know he's going to give me more on defense if he gets the ball on offense earlier in the game. It seems odd that a guy might be your fourth or fifth option on offense on in basketball, but you give him the ball earlier for production later in the game. But that's just how the mind works, man. You're talking about like a guy, 
hey, you make you miss a tackle or take a bad angle or you get beat, you're out the rest of the game. You're playing timid. You're looking over your shirt. You talked about Kyle McCord earlier. Like, if Kyle McCord knows he is the guy, you might get a better version of McCord earlier this season. We don't know that, but that is possible. And so that coaching adjustment, simply just letting guys ride, letting guys make mistakes, figuring out how to overcome said mistakes later in the game, that's a great formula for success for the Buckeyes tomorrow against Western Kentucky. Yeah, 100%. And what's crazy is I relate to that. I was that guy at one point in high school. Yeah. Like I was, there was a point in time where I was just so afraid to make a mistake because I knew my number was getting pulled. If I ain't make my first three, like you're coming out. And it was like, I know I'm better than that, but you play so tight. Yeah. So now maybe the shot that you know you should have took, you don't to protect yourself from like, well, if I didn't miss a shot, then really what is he going to say? It's the same thing on defense. Like, Maybe I don't take this angle or maybe I don't try and jump this route and make this play because I know I can make it. But that little chance that I don't, I'm getting pulled. So that's now it. I'm not going to go for the big play. That's for, and that's more DBs and, you know, whatever. That's D linemen. OK, I have them beat. But if I just contain them, if I go for the sack and then he scoots up in the pocket yeah. because I take an angle that I shouldn't have took up. Oh, well, the defensive line coach sees that he hey, getting pulled. You know, he took the wrong angle. All he needed to do was contain him, not go for the big play and go for the sack. Where a lot, like like we said, when you could play loose, a lot of times you play a lot better. Guys who play scared don't play good. They're not at the top of their game. And so I think defensively, I think that's why the offense looked so fluid in the first half last week. Is because I feel like Kyle McCord kind of knew he's playing for the starting job, but he's going to get majority of the snaps. And I think that's why Devin Brown played so bad last week because he knew this was, A, the way Kyle McCord played, I can't make no mistakes if I'm still trying to be the starter. And he made a few. It's the same thing on the defense. Denzel Burke plays the whole game. Why? Because they don't throw to his side. And when they do, he gets an interception. Man. Like, yeah, don't throw to my side. <laughs> but when you have Denzel Burke, who I think is our best DB, best corner. Yeah. The other guys, we've seen bright spots from Cam Martinez. We've seen bright spots from Sonny Styles and Josh Proctor. Like, we've seen them make good plays. So if you just let them make good plays consistently and take the good with the bad and knowing that they're a human being and a college football defensive player, and they're going to make a mistake here or there and not treat it like execute you and, and tra hit the transfer portal then if you're going to miss a tackle here and there. We, we got to stop doing that. But it's, it's bigger on the defensive side of the ball. I don't really have a problem with the offensive rotation, especially when you know like – Hey, maybe I don't want to play MHJ, MHJ as much because, like, hey, we need him in the big game. So get Carnell Tate in there. I'm cool with that. But on the defensive side, it's like one mistake and you're done. And we've seen that since last year. And I think that's messed with the psyche of a lot of defensive players, which is why we can't reach whatever our potential is with the talent we have. I'm not saying we have a top five defense or nothing. But I think our defense has a lot of potential. If we could just steady rotations and steady, like, hey, don't look over your shoulder when you make a mistake. Get him back next play. Mo, love having you on the show. We talked earlier. We will have you on the show in the future, trying to get a rotation with guys on these Friday shows. Some of my guys really good at what they do. Jeff Hunt, Mo Murphy, Duke, Mo, a part of the Off Ball Network. Jeff is supposedly retired, but homies on shows all the time. Oh, man, and, crazy. <laughs> bro, every time I look up on Facebook, it is Jeff on something. He was on the show with you recently. He does stuff with Stu. And I'm like, bro, you said you was retired. Then it changed to semi-retire. He doing more stuff than I am, it seems like. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was done, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> but, Mo, if you could let everyone know where um, they can follow you, watch your shows, and uh, check out the stuff going on at the Off the Ball Network. Yeah, so you can follow me at Mo underscore Cheese 15 on Twitter. That's where I'm most active. I always plug in my Up in Flames pod Instagram, even though I don't really be on there. Um, I'm more on Twitter. That's where I engage with everybody. You can check out Up in Flames on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasts. You can also check out um, the College Football Podcast. I'm a host of Phil Stormers. Just put another episode out, uh, preview in week three. Um, we always do a preview and we recap. So we twice a week, maybe sometimes three times a week, depending on what we got going on. But yeah, uh, Jay, as always, I appreciate you for having me on, though. It's always an honor to be on Locked on Buckeyes. Appreciate that, Mo. And you guys can follow me on Twitter at jstevens 7 Send all of your emails to jstevens317 at gmail.com. We are out of here on a Friday, Buckeye fans. Tomorrow afternoon, we get more Buckeye football. We get to unite, and this is our time of year. See you guys. Oh, one more note. One more note. I almost forgot. No live postgame show tomorrow. There will be a show dropping on Sunday morning recapping tomorrow's game. I'll be at the game, so I would not have 
quick, easy access to do a live show, but you'll get something in your feed Sunday morning. Guys, that's enough for Mo and I. We'll see you next time.